Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to um, link up these recipes. So right now, I'd like to click on these recipes and go to like a separate page. For example, um, like slash view slash, and then like some kind of ID for the post, and go visit and just look at just that recipe and maybe get like a, a more in-depth I want to maybe see the ingredients for this post or whatever so let's jump right into that so we're gonna go back to our uh, client application um, and then we're gonna create a new component it's gonna be single recipe .js and we're gonna import react component And then we're going to import some semantic UI things. Header, image, segment, container. And we're going to create our class single recipe extends component. Then before I forget, let's go ahead and export. Export default default single recipe. Okay, so for the single recipe, we're gonna need a constructor because at the beginning of the load, whenever you load this page, what we would like to do is when we go to, for example, view and say like this ID right here, what we'd like to do is grab the ID of the post, which we put right here, and search the recipe um, using that. So that's going to be a parameter in the router. So we can get this by doing this dot props dot fetch recipe. This is going to be the fe function I'm going to call so we can actually fetch the recipe. This.props.params.recipe ID. Okay, so we're going to create an action um, called fetch recipe, which we'll do in a second. And then this is the parameter. This recipe ID is that thing right here that we're going to grab. And we're going to pass and actually fetch this from the API or feathers. Um, from the feather server and, and look through the database and grab that ID with it. Now to actually get this working we need to add that to the router so we'll do that a little bit later as well. So now for our render function um, once a recipe has been fetched um, we can actually start doing stuff but until then um, we kind of just wait are waiting on the fetch to happen so we're gonna try to we're gonna get the recipe from this dot props. We'll call it cur recipe, um, and then we're gonna check um, if recipe dot has own property name. That means it's finished loading, or if it does not have it, that means it's not finished loading. So we'll just put out a paragraph tag saying loading. Um, we won't actually see this because it'll load faster and it'll re-render um, below, but that's good to have uh, so we don't get null exceptions. Um, not null exceptions, but undefined exceptions. Okay, so now let's do, uh, it's going to come to this return statement. Um, when we actually have finished fetching the recipe because what's going to happen is we're going to make uh, this a saga and that's going to happen in the background we don't know when it's done so we're just waiting for it and when it is we're going to display a header this will be an h1 and this will be the name of the recipe so recipe.name And then let's get the image for this recipe and set the source equal to the recipe dot 
change URL size equals medium and let's center it so centered and then let's create a segment group group um, and then in between that we're going to do all the recipe or all our ingredients so recipe dot ingredients dot map and then the ingredient and the index we will be creating a segment and the key is I and then in between that we'll just display the ingredient then lastly make this a container for text we'll just display the description. Now what I want to do is uh, split up the description um, by new lines and for every new line I want to map that to a new paragraph tag um, that way it renders nicely on the screen. So we'll set the key equal to I and then the content is equal to D we'll close the paragraph tag because if we just put the description in one big paragraph tag it wouldn't wrap nicely but for every new line if we split it like this it'll wrap pretty nice okay so that's perfect um, next thing I want to do is actually oh, let's do a semicolon next thing I want to do is get into the um, actions and actually create this fetch recipe action right here. So if we go to our actions we're going to create a new action. Now we're going to call it fetch recipe. And it just takes one parameter, the ID of the recipe that we're looking for. And we'll call it recipe fetch requested as the action. Okay, now actually let's go to our saga and implement it there. Okay, so we're going to be taking two of these guys. So this will be um, fetch recipe. This will be call fetch recipe. And then this will be fetch recipe saga. And then we're going to change this to recipe fetch requested. Um, and then we're going to call fetch recipe or pass it the feathers app. And then we also need to fork it. So fetch recipe saga and inside our fetch recipe um, we're going to do stuff a little bit differently our API we're going to get a new one called fetch recipe and then we're going to call fetch recipe passing in just the ID so action dot ID um, and then this is going to return us a recipe get rid of that and then once we're done fetching the recipe we actually just want to put the recipe in like this and we want to send it to the reducers that way they can um, recipe fetch done pass in the recipe that way the reducer can go ahead and add that to the state okay so we just created that let's go into our API and create our fetch recipe so services API it's gonna be very similar to this one we're gonna 
fetch recipe and we're gonna get the ID of the parameter we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna get the recipe service and then we're gonna find we're gonna use a query um, but the query is gonna work a little bit differently because we're not gonna we don't want to sort anything the first thing we want to do is we want to limit it to only one result because we're only looking for uh, one recipe and then we're looking for it to match this ID that was passed in so what it's going to do is it's going to look for one recipe in the database that matches this ID and then return that ID or that recipe now we need to make a reducer so let's go to reducers um, <coughs> we'll call this cur recipe dot javascript and we'll call function cur recipe state we'll keep an empty object if we haven't fetched yet and then switch action dot type case and we're looking for recipe fetch has been completed which is done and when it's done we're going to return the first recipe found but we can't just do action dot recipe what it's going to return us is an array with uh, all the objects it found um, we're going to do a little bit of er error checking we're going to check if uh, it found the length so if the length is not equal to zero then we'll get the first element if it's returned us no objects we'll just return an empty object so in our default we'll just return state and then we'll just export default cur sp now we just need to add this to our root reducer real quick so cur recipe cur Okay, so that's that. Um, next thing I want to do is actually make this route. So I want to do view, and then we want to take a parameter, the recipe ID. So let's make that route in the index. So if we come right here, just create another route. And this will be slash view. And then we're going to take a parameter, recipe ID and then we'll serve up the single single recipe okay so we're gonna create get that from our component single recipe awesome now we're just gonna go to our app real quick so components app oops and we just need to map it to the state so cur recipe is equal to state dot cur recipe that's just getting it this is what we called it in the reducer and then finally I just want to add this as a link to my recipe card so that way we can actually click on them so that will be you can make an on click And in this on click, we're going to do browser history. So let's import browser history. Because after we click on it, we want to actually go to uh, that. We want to redirect them to the page of that recipe. So we're going to use browser history. And dot push. Um, we're going to do back ticks. We're going to go to view slash and then whatever ID uh, the recipe is so it's recipe dot underscore dot ID it's the value and that should work for us let's go check it out so if we go to the main page um, and click on this one notice how it takes us to uh, the single page for it we see the description we see the ingredients the image there and we see uh, it takes us to the page that we want 
And if we say get rid of that, it'll take us, we'll just start loading because we couldn't find it. We can go back home, click on another one of these. Oh, looks like we can't find it. Let's see if there's a different error. We go to our console, we can check out what happened. Cannot read property of split. So in this case, we tried to uh, split right here. We go to components, single recipe. Recipe.description split because this uh, recipe does not have a description. It uh, crapped out on us. But this one has a description. Oops, let's refresh the page. There we go. Because this one has a description, um, it worked good. So we need to make sure uh, we force users um, to add a description they can't just leave it blank. Um, so in the next video I kinda wanna show you guys um, how to set up the sign up so we can create new users and start uh, doing some authentication so we can have a login page and we can have a navigation at the top to show logged in users and that sort of thing. So thanks for watching.